Welcome on to Disco Legion. What is this? Okay, this is wild. I, I really don't know what this is, but I mean, cool, I guess. I mean, I'm not necessarily pro this because, you know, Zaum or Z A M Z A U M Zaum. I'm pretty sure it's Zaum or Zom. You know, they they kind of did a lot of shady stuff and are kind of funded by a criminal who's doing criminal stuff. So, one introduction: This content policy applies to all individuals who use collage within the Disco Elysium, the game, quote unquote. Please read this content policy carefully before using the collage. This content policy may change or be updated from time to time by us. Uh, we are happy for you to create and share your content created in collage content in quotes under the following conditions you must not remove the collage watermark from your content or otherwise publicly display your content in a way that hides the collage watermark you do not have the rights to use another person's ip as defined below in your content then you must not use it if we learn that your content also includes other people's ip without their permission we may require you to take it down we have the right to stop or restrict your use of Zalm's IP at any time for any reason redeem appropriate in our sole discretion, including without limitation when we think your use is inappropriate, offensive, damaging, or disparaging. If this happens, you must immediately take down your content. You further agree that you will not post, communicate, transmit, or make any content which is abusive, sedacious, pornographic, homophobic, I mean, uh, homophobic is the first thing I've seen there that's like, pog. I mean, abusive is, is a good thing to not have. Se what, what's sedacious? Is this like, uh, I, I can't say that I would portray the US in like a second for literally any reason. Like literally any benefit that I could see, I, I would portray the US. But this is a joke, of course. I live in the U.S. I'm going to die here. Sedacious. Inciting or causing people to re rebel against the authority of a state or monarch. Hey, you, you, you know what this game is, right? <laughs> like, did, did you guys actually play the game that you know, was written by the people you kicked out of the company? Did, did you guys actually read what the story is about? No, of course you didn't. But anyway, uh, defamatory, libelous, hateful, discriminatory, obscene, inflammatory, or racist. I mean, like, those are all fine, but like, what's wrong with being obscene? I feel like I'm pretty obscene. But, uh, anyway, harasses, bullies, or intimidates any person. Involves the sending of unsolicited or unauthorized advertising or promotional material or spam. Is unlawful, malicious, misleading, or which gives rise to civil or criminal liability. Breaches regulation or applicable codes of conduct. Or which, in our sole discretion, we feel might call us... Or our game into disrepute. Disrepute. Uh, infringes or is likely to infringe the IP contractual, confidentially, or other rights of us or any third party anywhere in the world or facilities or encourages such infringement. Constitutes or promotes any illegal or unlawful activity or any activity which otherwise results in a breach of ap applicable regulation or codes of conduct. Con contains any restricted material, including but not limited to passwords, medical information, or confidential information of any person, or solicits, invites, encourages, advocates, incites, or provokes any of the all foregoing or otherwise does not comply 
with the spirit as well as the letter of the preceding terms. Three, intellectual sharing your content you grant to us a non-exclusive worldwide sub-licensable right and license to reproduce copy distribute provide access to publish perform supply use market advertise promote and otherwise display the content to use any and all ip in the content for such purposes ip means copyright design rights date database rights, patents, and any other rights to inventions, know how, know how, trade and business names, trade secrets, and trademarks, whether registered or unregistered, and any applications or extensions, therefore, and all other intellectual properties of any similar or equivalent type in any territory of the world. We grant you a limited non-exclusive right and license for you to use the content of the game and IP in it made available to you in collage for your personal non-commercial use pursuant to the terms of U E E U L A and this content policy. And in the event of any conflict between this content policy and the EULA, the terms of the EULA shall repair shall prevail well huh, first of all is the ula europe because like i i like first of all i don't abide by anything i do what i believe is morally right regardless of what some government in institution tells me but like I am not beholden, beholden to europe laws oh and end user license agreement okay is a legal contract between a software supplier and a customer or end user generally made available to the customer via retailer acting as an intermit intermediary. All right. So where where was I with this? All IP rights in or connected with the game and each part therefore of are owned by, belong to, and vest in us and our licensors, pursuant to the U. E U L A, EULA. I'm just going to say EULA, and I hope we're cool with that. The license granted to us by Clauses 3.2 confers no title or ownership in the game or any IP therein. The game is solely for personal, non commercial use by end users according to the term of this content policy and the, U and the EULA. Any use, reproduction, or redistribution of the game not in accordance with the terms of the content policy in the EULA is expressly prohibited. Does this count? I'm not making any money off of this, so uh, sue me. Sue me, Zalm, a poor person who has done nothing and will never do anything. Um, anyway. You shall be solely responsible for your content and for ensuring that it complies with any applicable laws, regulations, policies, and guidelines, including, without limitation, any third-party platform policies or gu guidelines. We are not and shall not be made liable, in whole or in part, for any claims, actions, or dispute made against us or you relating to any of your content. Sure. Sure. So is this just like sort of a, a uh, kind of hmm. whoa, big carry. <laughs> Tiny Harry. <laughs> I love Tiny Harry. Tiny Harry is the best. Wow. You can do all sorts of different poses.
<laughs> yeah, this is like neat and all, but also like kind of utterly pointless. You feel? Oh, I like the cats. The cats are uh aw 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 Dick Mullen and That's cool. <laughs> and what's the other thing I could change? Create scene. Oh, okay. All right. Well, also, sorry to do this to you if you have like anything kind of bad with your eyes. Damn. <laughs> no more dates, just uh, just the month. October, October, November, November, January. Oh yeah, look at Kim with his new jacket. Okay. Ooh. I don't know, I'm quite excited to play, but I think honestly, I'm gonna finish off this drink, use the bathroom, and then I'm gonna come back and play. But you know, I'm gonna be here until I'm not, so enjoy my commentary or my ramblings or whatever I got going on, to be honest don't really know <sighs> damn this is real good Ooh, that could have been bad. I almost bumped my mic real hard and real bad there. But I didn't, so we're all good. Oh, man. All right. Um, anyway, again, terribly sorry to do this to you. Uh, I will be back at some point. But until then, um, enjoy the uh, hardcore music.
Hey, what's up? I'm here. But I'm going to grab me another drink because no, no, I'm drinking today. Drinking and also quitting nicotine, which sucks because all I want is nicotine. All I want is sweet, juicy little puff of, 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 of fucking nicotine. Here, I'm moving this way. What am I talking about? I don't know. Definitely nothing. And nothing at all. But dude, juicy little puff. Just, just a little one. Just a tiny little itty bitty puff. But I can't. I can't. But I gotta quit. And besides, I'm dead. I'm dead. It, can, it don't work. It's just, it's, not, it's just not gonna happen. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'll be back in a moment. Sorry. out there that, 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 that can really, really relate, relate to, uh, to, to me, because, uh, you just hit every single fucking vein, goddamn villain, not a single one of them, not a one turned on, not a one that said, oh yeah, 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 sure, we got you now, nothing, I got nothing, man, yeah. I got THC. Alright. But it certainly feels like I have nothing. It feels like that you know, all I have is the emptiness on the inside. The feeling of being unfulfilled, unsatisfied, constantly hungry, ever ravenous for the next new thing. For something else, for something different, for something new, for the same old thing once again. And nothing will ever satisfy me, nothing will ever feel, nothing will ever feel, make me feel okay, or fill this void that I have in my soul. And the truth is, I don't have a soul, I don't have anything, all I have is a mind and a body. And that's it, that's all you get. Some of us got bad bodies, some of us we got bad minds, some of us we got a bit of both. Some of us have neither, some of us are perfect, some of us will never be anything but. I don't even know if that makes sense, but hey, I'm far from perfect, and, I, and I, that's me, that's my bit. Um. <laughs> <coughs> They're fucking alcoholics that are like you. You know, I might be predispositioned to alcoholism, but I ain't a fucking alcoholic, alright? I'm addicted to weed. I'll smoke that shit slash vape it every single fucking day of my life, alright? But, like, booze? I don't, I 
I'll do that like once a week, man. Like, chill the fuck out, you know? Like, I'll do that maybe like, uh, you know, uh, on a Friday and like a Sunday of a weekend and then like not do it again for like two months. And like, that's fine, man. You know, like, it's cool. You never want to overdo it with alcohol, because you overdo it with alcohol, that's really going to make you miserable. That's really going to give you a bad time. And, uh, yeah, well, I, I don't want to have a bad time, you know? Only you want to have a bad time. So, yeah. yeah. I'm going to grab you some water. That seems before I do, big ol' hit of the THC fucking anime. Yeah, wow, that's like a huge clout. That's like exceptionally large. That's like insane. This amount of THC. I just had it in my lungs, it is now <coughs> floating through my room. I have returned even more drunk than before. Drunk on what? Drunk on water, baby. It's the stuff of life. It's amazing. It'll really get you going. And, uh... Yeah, what the hell's even happening? I got six physique. God damn. I don't even know what just happened. Nice, right on, Kuno. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Did someone say... Pry bar. Fuck yeah. Pry bar. Pry bar, pry bar. Your palms to grasp it once more, as you've done so many times. No or pry bar. We might want to ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. And he also has information. Ask the manager? Bullshit. Go straight for the pry bar and pry this baby wide open. Yeah. 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 Pry it open. We gotta, we gotta open it for the investigation. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. 
In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Um, pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. Pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Cold and heavy. Like truth. You feel like you're reunited with truth once more. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue, blue. Lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Hey, Kim, what are we looking at? What is this machine? This is the Coupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. Can we turn it on and drive somewhere? No, I'm afraid not. We have a murder case on our hands, remember? Okay, but what is a motor carriage? A motorized vehicle, officer. I'm sure you are familiar with the concept. We've had this for nearly a century. Do all policemen in the RCM have such cool motor carriages? The Cupris motor car does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. Mm. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. All right. So, yeah, what what have I gotten done? Got to inspect the body. Port my badge machine. Pay for damages. Get a reality lowdown. And then open trash container. Stop between those trucks down there. Smokes, go get them. Smokes. Ah, smokes. Oh man, 
I don't know. So sorry, this is kind of coming out of nowhere, and if I've been quiet for a while, but like, man, I love Disco Elysium. This is my favorite game. Like, if you just watch me play this, you don't even know what's going on. Stop watching me play it. Go, 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 play this game for yourself. It, it, it's amazing. All right, what's up, big man? Bastards! We have a right to work. Looks like too much trouble for my taste. I'm way too drunk right now. Hmm, I only have a dollar. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says whirling in rags. You stick the pry bar into the fissure beneath the lid and push down. It doesn't take much force. With a satisfying crack, the metal gives way. You can open the lid now. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't. Of course you should. This is your time to shine, Hobo Cop. Dive into that dumpster for extra content. Yeah. What's this? Just the feeling. A warning from some part of you. No, I don't care. Open the lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Hmm. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. A tea sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaverine odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Guitar mark blue jeans. Pockets. Empty. Or empty. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but the belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of ribbed shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. Just garbage. <laughs> oh, man, it smells awful, but that's all I think. <laughs> all right, we should go to Garth again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. Yeah, we need to ask those kids who put them them here. The fuck's he on about, kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? Uh, you think someone from the Whirling might have some, might have been involved, maybe? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Okay. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure but hey what's this what a blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels it's shiny looks like the corner of something something larger a clipboard a blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it they look badly damaged but you can still make out forms and notes 
written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? I don't know what this is. It is. Look, the plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. Huh? If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? Hmm. Someone from the whirling whirling threw it in, in the trash. I don't, I don't know. I'm boring. Boring? Try dangerous. You should do a thorough inventory of that. Be sure some has not fallen into the hands of the RCM's enemies, organized crime, or worse. Official notes sometimes contain informants' names, even undercover operatives. I don't know, man. Sounds like an order. I don't take those. I see. Yes. You are what we call a badass, aren't you? Tell me, does your badass see more in there, or are we done here? Ah, oh, yes, uh, and it would also be appropriate to start taking notes on the case. It's what cops do. Okay, well, let me uh, dig in here hobo cop style for extra content. Wow, an armistice caliber 50 knock cannon, half wrapped in paper tissues. So shiny. What's a knock cannon? It's a giant rifle, and it's very expensive. Not as expensive as that fat string of pearls snaking around the rotten banana peels, however. And is that Cordon Electric's preamp with Electra F2 tubes? It is. That catches quite a price. We're talking 12,000. Easy. Unless you're into hi-fi yourself. I am into hi-fi. That sounds cool as hell. That's too bad, because none of those things are actually in there. There's just food waste and crisp wrappings. Oh. Cruel jest. There must be something. All you see is a broken mug with a racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Mm hmm The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. Right. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper. Desperately stick into the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. It's just toilet paper. Stick into the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Maybe it's kitchen tissue? They look exactly the same. If you want it to be kitchen tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. It's not, though. It's toilet paper. <laughs> Oh shit, I didn't even mean to do that. I was using the D-pad to move up and down. Obviously, my fat fucking thumb hit the left on the D-pad. But, you know, leave it there. It's cool. Mmm, cool toilet paper. I mean, kitchen tissue. <laughs> An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. What? Yes, uh, allergen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. Interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, Mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Your kill count. Yours will surely have your kill count. How can I read it? 
Any capable light with the right wavelengths will do. Like, for example? All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights off. That's all, thank you. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken, not completed, mind you. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Uka Parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. You like this grimy murdering, don't you? Wish there was one in there about a drug then. You love those. Gets the blood pumping. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean a non-numeric one with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named a case the Square Bullet Hole Mor Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. <laughs> the tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. And a fuck you to you too. That last one cuts a slash right through the paper. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? The fear is that 
are at home in the mirror. Fury. Yes, well, I don't know. I have to be honest. I'm not experiencing the internal strife that it refers to. And also, could you make it less poetic somehow? Just a normal case name, you know? Think, what would that be? A good normal name. The setting sun? Okay, okay. It's a good name, but it has one problem. This case has nothing to do with the setting sun. At all. It has nothing to do with that, so... Something more concrete, perhaps? Do you have something concrete? Mundane, usual. Shit on a stick? Ha, huh. yes. I have to tell you, officer, I don't appreciate ironic titles. Other officers will have to use this as reference. If it's idiot or cockfinger, they're not going to get it. They're going to think an idiot and a cockfinger were on this case. So, do you have something less funny? The hanged man? Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking, too. The hanged man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it the hanged man. It's good we sorted this out. You don't exactly close them so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Hmm. Browse the yellow papers. In the back, you see thin, translucent... ...some bright red, all covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms waiting to be filled out. Three, the topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs, color of the irises, predation marks, condition of sexual organs. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. There's pain in there, if you want some. That much you know. With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip screwed to the top of the board. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Mm. The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off its slides. If you bend the plastic on your knee, slowly, the slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know. Uh, uh, fuck now. All right. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. 
It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow, Kuno! The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth. More instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. God. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. I don't need your pity. It's not pity. You should wipe your mouth after vomiting. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. I don't need that shit. Sure you do. You just threw up a lot. Okay, where we get ammonia from? That young woman, the gardener, mentioned she used salts for the smell. If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the fridge store nearby. Hello again, officer. How are things? Do you still have your salts? I think I could use some. Sure. I'm done with them. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. I have to run. entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. You crack open the ammonia ampoule and breathe in. The odor of death is still stronger. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Your muscles tense up. The vision in your dead angle darkens. You feel the sudden urge to push your hand into his soft gut. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them, delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. What kind of boots are these? They are armor, no boots. Technically speaking, these are sabatons. Okay then, what kind of armor is this? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. What happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. 
It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. We should keep a lookout for these species. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. If you wear those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. Why does my mortal coil need protecting? Yes, bullets will fly. They always do. And the coil is fleshy and mush and permeable. Cast it in ceramic shell. Resist death. Maybe he was just wearing those boots and there's no rest of the armor. No, I think he had something precious underneath the clothes. They had to remove the jeans and shirt we found to get to it. And this kind of armor is often worn under fabrics. He could have been walking around naked, just like this, for all we know. A good point. He could have been intoxicated, or something we cannot yet imagine. I shouldn't have assumed so much just from the clothes. The materials look out of place here. It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary is deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Ka-ching, baby. By ka-ching, do you mean let's not lock them as evidence? Let's steal them? No, that's not what I meant. Of course. The lieutenant nods often. It's part of his unplastic expression range, communicating both professionalism and sarcasm. This time, the latter. <laughs> How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the harbor company. But that's just hearsay. Initial report? Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. These look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. The pry bar in your hand is itching for some action. The metal connects with the same ding. The sound does not appear to get louder. Did you hear that? A click? Yeah, like dice rolling. This is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads the incoming energy horizontally from plate to plate. When the plates connect, there's a click. That's the sound you heard. See these lines? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos, and extremities blotched pink and blue. Oh man, I love me the big old chunky auto saves. Uh, I think we'll talk to Joyce here. Um, actually, no. Before I do anything, I want to go take a look at the... Uh... Ledger. Or whatever. Top report. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. How do I turn on the headlights? All right. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rounds per minute gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Canada comes to life with a whiny growl. That sound. You feel the wind in your hair as if you're already driving. But where? Yes, where? Down a narrow street, lined with shabby wooden houses, the 881 motor tract, coiling like a serpent high above. Children play under the viaduct, eyes turn to watch you as you pass. What's ahead? The valley of dogs, and before it, a familiar dome, like a ladybug without the colors. The building has a designated parking place, 
for your carriage. This is Precinct 41, as close as you have to home now. It's far away. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is, Revachol West. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet, the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stopped lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. In the middle of a broken plaza, in a cone of light, barely visible in the daytime, two men, one slim, the other sturdy, they are on the city stage, but only one of them knows his lines. Ah, Martinez. Where were you on this? Let me see. Right here. I'm sure I've seen worse. Oh, yes. Coal City. Le Royaume. The Burnt Out Quarter. All of them worse than here. There are many of them and they are divided into three separate rows. The first row... Not bad for what? You don't even know what it means yet. The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. There are so many, it's hard to count. More than 150, at least. Maybe even 200. The last row has three perforations. That's it? That's it. Hey Kim, what do all these holes mean? Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Son, here is where we score your life performance. You better hope it's good. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Wait, 18 years I've done this? That's what it says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? Uh, probably some boring office job, same as everybody else. No shame in working a regular job, detective. Sometimes after a long day of doing this, I even envy it. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see... Wow, more than 200. Is that a lot? It's quite a lot even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. So, you say I used to be a super cop? Call it what you want. You were a valuable member of your precinct. Now, let's look at the last row. Right, those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. Confirmed kills. That sounds pretty evil. A drink would soften that feeling. Is now a good time to pour one out for the fallen? Definitely not. So, I'm a killer. That's right. A killer of humans. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamrock Quarter, it's rather tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. 
He's sincerely glad you're not a scary predator. Not to say relieved you're competent. Have you ever killed anyone, Ken? Yes. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Maybe I should find a hobby. Anything's better than annihilating yourself with drugs and alcohol. Thanks for this. The lieutenant nods. Okay, let's go. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. Let's see. Three superstar cop. Zero apocalypse. Zero sorry. Too boring. Zero for anything. One good cop, bad cop. Three people killed. 216k solved. 18 years in service. Alright, well, seems pretty good. I'm gonna wander on over to Joyce, and then I'm gonna save the game. And then what's gonna happen? Ooh, you're gonna have to stay tuned. Keep watching, find out what's gonna happen. You're gonna be you're gonna be rather surprised. I think, but I don't know, I mean, you know, feel however you wanna feel. I'm not the boss of you. That's it. Peace out.